Welcome to a, another episode of Outside the Glass. This week we're shifting gears from production of uh, wine to the actual building of a winery. Bill Schaefer from Cello and Madru has allowed us to interview him and um, give us some insights from a builder's perspective or a contractor's perspective on building a winery and the important steps it takes to be successful when building a winery. We're here today with um, Bill Schaefer from Cello and Madru, a construction company here in Napa that um, has built several wineries. And uh, Bill, nice to see you. You too. Thanks for having us. And um, Bill, tell us a little bit about you. Um, you've been in the construction game a long time. Obviously, you don't just do wineries. You do homes and things mm -hmm. like that as well, custom homes and other projects, I'm sure. Tell us a little bit about you uh, personally, and then tell us a little bit about your company. Okay. Well, uh, personally, I have uh, grew up with a background in design and architecture and actually came to construction circuitously in the mid-90s. Uh, there was an opportunity to um, build very important architecture with important um, architects and construction is one forum that allows you to touch um, a lot of different projects and a lot of different styles than just doing design work yourself and that was uh, very interesting to me. Uh, additionally, the thing that was also interesting, uh, as you mentioned, Cello and Madru has an expertise in both the high-end residential work and then the uh, commercial winery world and some hospitality as well. And our business is divided about uh, half and half. It's about 50% residential work and about 50% commercial winery work. And the winery work is um, centered here in the Napa and Sonoma Valleys. What's your role here at uh, Cell and Madru? What's your title? So um, I'm the operations manager here. So uh, the project management teams report to me. So I try to oversee or oversee those teams to create consistency uh, in how we provide our construction services to our clients. That's great. Um, so what is the first, uh, tell us a little bit about um, the evolution of the company and how it's got involved into the construction of wineries uh, and when that got started. Okay, so the, the company was founded in 1987. There were two founding partners, Bill Madru and Chris Sello. Um, Bill Madru was by training a Cal Poly graduate in construction management. Uh, Chris Sello was a career construction person. He has a degree in, had a degree in philosophy, I believe, from uh, UC Davis. Hmm and uh, got in, interested and involved in construction and was a superintendent. Um, Bill and Chris formed this partnership in 1987 and the first project was Hess Collection Winery um, here in Napa, Napa Valley, Christ, old Christian Brothers facility. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, interestingly, it was the same clients that we were building wineries for um, also have homes that they want to build. And the two types of construction are not that dissimilar. Uh, it's, it's interesting, you know, the, the winery uh, projects are highly sophisticated um, buildings, a high emphasis on industrial piping, um, tight tolerances for owners that demand a high level of quality, right? And the homes that we build, these large complicated buildings, also have very commercial types of systems, heating and cooling systems, electrical systems. So the two really are not that dissimilar. Um, so it's, it's interesting, it's a, it's a nice fit to do both. Tell us about maybe your first project and what you've, and what kind of information and expertise you've gained since then from okay. the beginning. Okay. Okay. Well, um, you know, interestingly, the thing I learned very early on about the winery construction, well, there's a, there's a, a strong emphasis on planning before the wineries get to construction, right? It's, there's, a, there's a long process for design, understanding the specific winemaking processes for an individual winemaker, um, and just how much emphasis needs to be placed on understanding what's that process, how does the winery need to be designed, 
Uh, and then there's an entitlement process with with the counties, with the County of Napa, County of Sonoma, wherever the winery project is. Uh, that's uh, you know a use permit process, which at this point in time can be a one to two year process to entitle a project, or if it's an existing facility that's being modified to to uh, to change that um, use permit, um, and then there's a second building permit process. So there's a um, I think a, a really strong emphasis uh, what we call pre-construction. Right? So there's a there's a there's a whole phase. It takes almost as long to do the pre-construction as it takes to do the construction, and uh, we as construction people like to be involved in the pre-construction phase because we're able to bring a high degree of expertise to to really educate the team, that's educate the owner, educate their consultants, work with their winemaker just to provide best practices so that by the time we actually do get to construction there aren't very many missteps. Right? Is that usually the responsibility of the project manager or is that something that you do personally? Uh, in the way we, the way our company is set up, we um, it is a form of project management. Uh, in, in our company, Selamadro is formed, there are six partners in the company, so six owners of the company, um, and each of us uh, brings a, um, a specific expertise, uh, but there are uh, three of us that really handle uh, taking projects sort of through that pre-construction phase, so it's bringing that winery experience, that knowledge to um, to those owners and those consultant teams. It's really shepherding the project. And when you're shepherding the project, you're shepherding um, the design team and the consultants uh, for, from a cost standpoint, from a schedule standpoint, uh, and just trying to help make that pro process the most efficient one possible. So in winery construction, what do you see as one of the major challenges um, in order to get a project through uh, to get in through in entitlements or just to just, just the to, challenge? Yeah, to get it to the you uh, know the, the building phase. Okay, well I guess that you know for for me the biggest uh, challenge that I see is that uh, you know winemakers are fairly transient, right? Yeah, they're sure. a group, right? And they'll start at one winery and they'll go and they'll 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 move around wineries. But so much of the construction of the winery, uh, its size of tanks, what the what the winery process is, what kind of trench drains they like, um, all of that is really dictated by the winemaker, and it's really getting a good handle on that in the design phase, so that we have that information, and then construction can move unimpeded. So you see a lot of uh, maybe movement mid process. What, what I see is that oftentimes if it's a ground up winery project, a lot of times owners won't have hired their winemaker. And they'll start the process, they hire an architect, they have design consultants, and they've, they've drawn it, they've permitted it, they're ready to start construction. We start construction and then they go and they hire their winemaker. And that's when things start to change. <laughs> I don't I don't like those fermentation <laughs> tanks. I don't like those catwalks, right? Yeah. I want my host stations to, to be different than that. And uh, that's usually the biggest misstep mm. that, that I see. So it might be a communication thing between owner, rep, or owner, and winemaker, and them getting on the same page. Right. Yeah. yeah. What do you see as, uh, from a, I guess, entitlement uh, point of view, uh, what are some of the challenges with counties and dealing with um, planning departments and things like that from your perspective? I think the, 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 one of the biggest challenges is time because especially when the, uh, uh, when the economy is booming like it is now, uh, there's a huge backlog of projects and the county has a limited number of people to manage the use permit process. Mm -hmm. There are a number of uh, uh, facilitators here in the county that specialize in, in doing that type of work, right? The owners will hire them and they'll help shepherd the project through. Um, but really the, you know, the, the, the biggest challenge is, is time, mm. right? The, mm -hmm. the process is pretty clear, the expectations are pretty clear. Uh, of course, you know, public opinion changes. My wineries, we were in a drought, there was a lot of feedback around water 
water use and that was really dictating a lot of feedback around use permits. And then of course we're seeing that the county, um, there's a lot of wineries here and there's feedback from the public that there's some perhaps oversaturation. Mm -hmm. you know, that the, we've met our limit. That we've met our limit. Um, but what we see too is that there's a lot of facilities that are here, brick and mortar winery facilities that have been here for 20, 30, 40, 100 yeah. years that are being purchased and then refashioned. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, maybe a portion of your business is refashioning or remodeling existing certainly. Uh, wineries? Most certainly. I would, I would actually say I've never, I've never really counted, but I would have to say it's probably half of them are wineries that are being remodeled. Mm -hmm. right, updated. Mm -hmm. The other thing that's interesting too is that wineries have um, they've evolved uh, from from my perspective, from our perspective. You used to see that fermentation spaces were not spaces that uh, the public generally went to to visit. Right? You didn't see those. You would the public would come in and they would go to the tasting room and they would taste in the tasting room and buy their wine there. And it was set up kind of like a bar. Mm -hmm. And now the public is really interested in. What, what, how, what's the wine making process? They want to they understand how is wine made. They want to see the fermentation room. They want to understand how it's cellared. Mm. Uh, and then the hospitality uh, process, uh, environment has changed as well. People aren't necessarily sidling up to a bar to taste wine. So if somebody wanted to, came to you, Bill, and said, you know, um, I have X amount of dollars and I, and I want to build a winery, um, what, where should I start? Mm -hmm. uh, I think the, the, actually the first place to start is to assemble a team. And it's not assemble part of the team, but it's, it's to assemble the whole team. I think that having a clear understanding, you just said it right there, which is I have X number of dollars. Uh, that's usually really helpful in terms of the process. It's for an owner to really assemble their team and to assemble the team, that's the design team, the construction team, their winemaking team, really establish what their goals are, what their budget is, what their schedule requirements are. So really have those core elements figured out and to be very explicit with the team to share that information so that the team knows exactly what the goals are. So it's either up to an owner or an owner rep maybe mm -hmm to organize that team, that that's the first step. Is that what you're telling us? Yes, well, I think it, it would be up to the, the owner or the owner's rep to set the goals. Mm -hmm. And then just depending on how the team is developed, um, oftentimes that's handled collaboratively. Sometimes we'll be heavily involved in developing that consultant team. Oftentimes the architect will be heavily involved in developing that consultant team. But sure. I think our advice is always, um, start to you know to, to, to design the budget and the schedule in pace with the design of the facility so mm -hmm. that uh, there aren't any missteps our, our biggest my uh, biggest experience is where um, what happens most often is where uh, a winery owner will go and they'll hire an architect they'll hire the consultants and they'll take the design up to 75 percent and they'll say okay well i've i've designed my winery i want somebody to build it now and they'll go out and interview a few contractors, they'll pick somebody that they want, they start to get cost feedback and they find out that it's double their budget, right? It doesn't necessarily meet their goals. So I think being very explicit about those goals with the team, and it's really working in a collaborative trust environment that for us usually um, develops the most successful end product. Hmm. What would you say the percentage of um, uh, what would you just say the percentage of projects actually go to uh, fruition from the people that come in your door? Wow. You're saying that's all opportunities or places yeah, where we've been? Yeah, in wineries in particular. Um, well, it's, it's interesting. We always were fond of saying that our biggest competitor is never built, <laughs> which is where a client comes in and... Um, They've got lofty dreams for what they want to build, but what's been designed um, isn't in pace with their budget. Right. Right. And so, oftentimes, for one reason or another, it does not get built. And so, I think for us, the earlier we're engaged in that process, the more the success rate goes up. Right. So, if we're involved at the very beginning and 
the team, there's a collaborative team in place that usually results in the most successful project and the success rate, the build rate, so mm -hmm. to speak, goes, goes up dramatically. Describe some of the things you need uh, and other subcontractors you need in order to build a winery. So the core, the really core components of the, the, the winery building there, it's really the, what we call the MEP, it's the mechanical electrical plumbing subcontractors. So uh, here there's uh, refrigeration is, mm -hmm. is a big one and there are a few players here in Northern California that specialize in refrigeration and winery refrigeration. Uh, plumbing, uh, plumbing is another one and there are special requirements related specifically to waste piping um, process waste piping, sanitary sewer piping, and it's a it's a specialty trade. It's not every plumber is used to doing that type of work. Uh, and then electrical work that most wineries use special equipment that's oftentimes uh, three phase equipment, special voltage. That having electrical contractors that are experienced in just really having that specific understanding around wineries is very helpful to us. So there's a key group of those subcontractors that really understand specialty things around wineries that uh, those are really the go-to subs here. Okay, well great. Well thank you so much for that information. I think that's really helpful for anybody who wants to start a winery and I would just sort of summarize that and get your team together mm -hmm. and get a realistic budget. That's really the core that's what it, that's what it is. Of that's, getting it started. Yeah, I think that's the advice. Yeah. So uh, currently, what is uh, Salo and Madru doing today? How many winery projects do you have uh, going on? So in construction right now. Um, so in construction right now, we're uh, just wrapping up Silver Oak Cellars in Alexander Valley, which is a large, brand new facility for them in Alexander Valley. And that's a very fantastic project because it's slated to be, it will be the most sustainable winery in the world. When oh, it's done, wow. it's a uh, lead platinum and living building challenge winery. So uh, it, at every step of the way, um, the Silver Oak team, the owners, have really set the goals there high. Uh, to really build the best facility possible. So through water reuse, um, through um, using very healthy, sustainable materials, uh, they've really gone the extra, extra mile to really build a special facility up there. And that facility is, um, production is scheduled to be, we're actually going to have final inspection here, or a temporary occupancy, I should mm -hmm. say. Uh, the middle of July, so just a few weeks from now. And oh, wow. so they'll be able to crush this year. They're crushing this year. Yeah. So that's that's the that's the other thing that I didn't uh, we didn't talk touch that much on, but schedule, schedule. is is so important for wine races because our work schedule has to be set with anticipation of wine. Making sure. In mind. Absolutely, because the winery can't make money unless they're crushing fruit. Unless they're, <laughs> unless they're making wine. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that that is important. Exactly. 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 Yeah. Other other uh, winery projects, uh, Hudson Vineyards in winery here in Carneros. We're working on some uh, project with them. Uh, we're back up at Joseph Phelps Vineyard to help uh, refashion some of the work around their barrel storage building. Um, doing a little work with Scribe Winery over here in Sonoma. Uh, so there's a, there's a lot of a lot of things that we're working on right now. Great. So. Um, Anybody interested in um, reaching out to you guys? Um, what's your contact information? Um, probably the best thing to do is to give us a call here at the office, which is 707-257-0454, or look us up um, on the web, which is www.cello-madru.com. Um, Great. Thank you so much, Bill, for taking the time to meet with us and um, tell Thanks, us Sarah. about your com or your company and uh, and all the exciting projects you're involved in. I can't wait to see some of those projects. Great. Thank you. Thank you. To see you. Yeah, you too. I want to thank Bill Schaefer and Solo and Madru for letting us interview them. Some of the take-home messages were that Solo and Madru not only builds beautiful buildings and wineries, but environmentally conscious as well. They are a state-of-the-art contractor with 
excellent customer service and a keen eye for the elegant and the very best in winery construction. Thanks again for joining us on Outside the Glass.